In this video we will be talking about Eclipse Water in combination with the Voto dashboard in order to visualize data stored in Bosch IoT things. In order to do that we have a few requirements we have to fulfill. Of course we have to have a Bosch IoT suite account. In addition to that we need to have a asset communication package and an OAuth2 client all from the Bosch IoT suite. If I switch over to my browser now we can see this here. So I'm in my Bosch IoT Suite account. I have the Bosch Asset Communication subscription in place with the name Voto Demo. Its status is active. And I also have the OAuth2 client already created. And we will look into how we use this client in combination with the Voto dashboard in a second. If we check back with our requirements, of course we have to also have Node.js and NPM installed since the dashboard is built with those technologies so we can use it to download and install the dashboard on our system. The last thing we have to have in place is this provisioned device in the Bosch IT suite. And this just means that we have created a digital twin of some device for us to read the data from. Switching back to the browser, I can show you this in the Bosch IT things HTTP API and this is basically a swagger interface. So what I will do is I will authorize myself and once that is done I can then go down for example to the things search. In here I will click the try out button which will enable this endpoint for me and then I can do execute. If we look at the response body, we can see that there is a thing already present, which is the Raspberry One, and this is basically just a Raspberry Pi tutorial information model we will look at now. Talking about this information model, it's basically set up for a Raspberry Pi that also has a GPS module and a Pi Top battery connected. Therefore, we have to have three different function blocks, which are indicated with this FB and the color on the Voto repository. And I've already connected and integrated this device beforehand. So in this tutorial, we will see the data from this device being displayed in the dashboard. If you haven't provisioned or integrated the device, feel free to check out the other videos that will show you how to first provision your device and then integrate it with, for example, Python. In order to now go in and get this dashboard running on our system, we have to do three simple steps. One is downloading Voto dashboard. This means that we will run uh, npm command on our terminal in order to install it on our local system. While it is installing, we will go in and do the configuration of the app for the Bosch IT suite in a configuration file. The third one will be running the app and verifying the data inside of the app. So on the right hand side, you can see the example screenshot of it. Our system will look like this once we're done. I will now switch over to the terminal and in here basically everything I have to do is do an npm install minus g and a Voto dashboard and the dash g just stands for global installation so we can use Voto dashboard later on. While this is installing I will go back to my browser and open the Voto repository on github. In here we have a tutorial called Voto web app dashboard and if we look into it and scroll down a little bit further, we can see this create a config JSON file with a client ID. And since I'm lazy, I will just copy and paste this configuration template in a new file called config JSON. And now I will paste this in here. And everything we have to do now really is to remove the placeholders and replace them with the information we have in our Bosch IT suite OAuth2 client. So let me go back to my OAuth2 clients and I will use the use button here in order to get the token and the example HTTP request. And in here we can see client secret, client ID and the scope. And what I will do is, is I will just copy and paste each of those parameters and paste them into my configuration file, one after the other. One important thing for this scope here is that you really take the whole string, which will give you full access to things in Hub, which will be necessary to retrieve the data from things Make sure to also copy this service keyword in the beginning, paste it in there. If everything looks good, we will save this, we will exit it. And basically that's everything we have to do. So we went through the first two steps, we downloaded and installed the dashboard. 
and we created this configuration file. So what we can now do is just type water dashboard and then do a config.json, the file we just created, hit enter, and in a second we will see app running on port 8080 and the link to the configuration file we're using. What we now can do is open up our browser and just go to localhost 8080, which will open the water dashboard. And for now, we won't see any data in here. You can see it already. So if we check back with our app running on port 8080 in the terminal, we can see now it's successfully pulled one thing. Checking back with the dashboard itself, we can see that there is one device in here right now. And this is the weight device I just described to you the, with the features we have in here. So we have a CPU temperature, we have geolocation and battery. And as you can see, the device is empty right now, so we won't see any updates of the data in here. If we have more devices, we can also check with the Locate tab, which will display the location of every device that has a location or geolocation function block used in the voter information model description. And to differentiate those, we can click on those markers and then we will see a small summary of the information for this model. And if you click on the Raspberry Pi tutorial text, it will take us back to the dashboard for the specific device. So what you can now do is just create more devices, provision more devices, and you will see them pop up here if they are created with the same client credentials. This is exactly what I will do right now. Since this is a video about the voter dashboard, I will not show you this process. If you're interested in how to do this, how to provision new devices, please feel free to go back to one of the other videos that describes how to provision new devices. So I have this Tracy tag provisioning and what I will do is, is I will just send the request and wait until I get the response back. And if we check back with our dashboard now, we can see that we already have the second device with a name we just created in here. Let's take a second and recap what we did here. We took the Bosch IoT suite OAuth 2 client in order to tell our application what user is requesting data, what user is requesting devices. Downloading the dashboard was as simple as doing npm install dash g voter dashboard, which will install it as a global dependency into our system so we can use it as a command in our command line terminal. If you now want to provision and integrate more devices, feel free to check out the other videos that will explain you how to describe a new device, how to provision it, and how to integrate it with Python.